Hailing from the great cold state of Alaska, I am the Frozen Gamer, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the top 10 indie games that I want to see on Switch. Now I want to make it clear, this is by no means an exhaustive list, and this is not discounting all of the great indie games that already exist on the Switch, as well as games we know for sure are already coming. This is just purely a list based on games that I have either played previously or that I am ex wanting to play in the not too distant future. And be warned, a lot of my picks are very puzzly kind of games. However, I still think every single one of the games on this list should come to Switch and would be a fantastic addition. So for my top 10 indie games, number 10 is Cube Director's Cut. Now, some of you may have already played this game either on the Wii U or on any number of other platforms as it really came out to just about every platform, last gen, as well as PC. I played this game on PC, and as someone who always enjoys a good puzzle game, especially a first-person kind of puzzle game, this game to me was excellent. I don't think of it as necessarily on the same level as Portal or anything like that, however, it's still a really great game and well worth putting your time into. Number 9, Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. Now, Guacamelee is one that we already did get on Wii U, and it was a fantastic game. It's one that I've actually bought, I think, four different times. Um, I originally bought the Gold Edition on PC, then I bought the Super Turbo Championship Edition on Wii U the next day, um, and then I bought it on PS4, and then I bought the Super Turbo Championship Edition yet again on PC. And so, it really is a truly fantastic Metroidvania game, well worth putting the time into. Number 8, Quantum Conundrum. This is yet another one of those first-person puzzle kind of games, that uh, puzzle platformer games. It's not, I think it's probably one of the weaker titles in, in terms of the environments and everything, but the puzzles are top-notch and they really require you to think a lot. Um, I definitely had times where I was legitimately stumped, and there was one point where I actually had played through probably the majority of the game, I think actually probably, probably around like a third to half of it, and I just got stuck at one point. I was having problems with it. I came back to it years later, and I can't remember if I restarted the game or if I just continued from where I left off, but either way, um, I got back into it. I ended up playing through it over the next couple of days and absolutely loved it. Truly a fantastic game and so far this has not been on a Nintendo platform. It would be a great game for portable play and I think that it definitely deserves a spot in the Nintendo eShop. Number 7, The Swapper. Now for those of you who have not played The Swapper, this is a 2D puzzle uh, platformer kind of game set, uh, it's, very, it's a sci-fi game and um, really has probably one of the deepest and most interesting uh, sci-fi stories that I've come across. It's one of those games that not only makes you think in terms of the difficulty of the puzzles and everything, but in terms of philosophy. Um, it really makes you think about what's going on in the game far more than I ever thought a game like this would. And it's a game that I um, truly love. It's it's already currently available on PC and PS4 and Xbox One and Vita um, and I believe also PS3 and 360 but this is one that I would happily buy yet again on the Nintendo Switch and um, on top of all of that something that I failed to mention with previous games but is still especially worth mentioning with this one as well as Guacamelee and that is the soundtrack. I mean the soundtrack fits so perfectly and it's one that I really love to listen to even by itself. My number six choice is Bastion. Uh, this is one of those great classic indie games. Um, it's been around I think since around 2010 maybe. Um, don't quote me on that. I can't remember the actual release year. Um, but this is one of those games that I have played a little bit of, but I didn't get super far in, partially because on PC, I at least I found that I had difficulty playing without a controller, 
and I feel like this is one that would be really good to play with a controller. Um, besides, it would just be a great game for Switch. has has that kind of an art style that would work really well. And on top of that, it's just it's it's a really cool game. My number five choice is Transistor. Now, this comes from the same developer, Supergiant Games, as Bastion. Uh, like Bastion, this also has a great soundtrack. Um, but the main thing that makes this game so interesting is uh, just just the concept and the mechanics and everything. And some of the, and as I said with the soundtrack before, the music in this game is super memorable. I played this through on PS4. I believe it was a free game through PS Plus a while back. Um, really, three, four years ago. But it's definitely a great game, well worth getting. And if it comes to Nintendo Switch, it's definitely going to be a buy for me. Number four is a game called Gunpoint. Now, this is an indie title that, honestly, I don't know if it exists anywhere except for PC. Um, a friend of mine in introduced me to this. Um, he actually got it for me as a Christmas gift, I believe. And... You know, I didn't really know what to think about it because it has uh, it's a 2D uh, puzzle platformer uh, with stealth mechanics and it's just a really interesting game. Um, it's it's got a, a story based around uh, basically you're a detective and you're trying to solve a murder if I remember correctly. It's it's been a little while since I've played, but um, the style very much is reminiscent of. Kind of like if, if an Atari game had a whole lot more pixels to it. Um, in that, you know, like the characters, the art style, characters don't have faces and that sort of thing. Um, I guess you could probably kind of compare it to a game like Nidhogg in a way, except that I think that it's still more detailed than that. It's kind of hard to explain without seeing it. But Gunpoint is was a surprisingly amazing game. Like, it's literally probably one of my favorite indie games that I've ever played and um, the ba one of the best things about it I found is that it's possible to get through almost every single level without being heard seen or detected in any way shape or form and it's just um, it's a challenge that isn't necessarily like they don't expect you necessarily to do that and there's really a lot of different ways to get through the levels but it's one game that I found is truly superb. Uh, like a lot of these other games, it also has a really excellent soundtrack. Uh, I still get the song stuck in my head from time to time, in fact. But it's a game that I would love to see on more platforms. I would happily buy it again. I've already bought it, not just... Um, I mean, even though I was gifted the game originally, I bought it for friends as well because of how great of a game it is. And I highly recommend it. Uh, and hope that it's going to come to Switch. My number three choice is Cube 2. Now this game, uh, I believe, actually just recently came out on PC, and it's one that I have, I mean, once I found out about it, which was really only like maybe two months ago I found out this game was even coming out, it's a game that I've been wanting to play. However, I've been waiting mostly because I'm kind of hoping it's going to come to Switch, and I think that it actually has a little bit better chance than the first game, only because of the fact that it's a newer title and Nintendo seems to be trying to shoot for more new titles than old ones. But either way, this is a game I'm definitely anti highly anticipating. I really want to play this game. Um, but e whether, whether I play it on Switch or PC, I'm going to play it. I just hope that it comes to Switch because then you have that great portable play. My number two choice for top 10 indie games is The Witness. Uh, now this game, as far as I know, is on both PS4 and Xbox One, as well as PC. And um, like every other <laughs> puzzle game, it's just one that really fascinates me. I've heard great things about it, and it's a game that I think would be a perfect fit for the Switch, just like the rest of these. Now, my number one choice for the top 10 indie games I want to see on Switch is Guacamelee 2. Guacamelee, as I already have said before, is an excellent game. The sequel, I think, is going to be equally excellent, and I just can't see any good reason why it shouldn't come to Switch. Um, indie games have been doing great on the system. 
Guacamelee is already a well-established, well-loved franchise, and there's really... <laughs> I, I just think it would be foolish for it not to come to Switch because it's going to sell extremely well on there. And I personally, if it comes to Switch, will be buying it and playing it day one, which I can't say about a lot of games. So what about you guys? What other indie games can you think of that are not already on Switch that we don't know if they're coming to Switch that you would like to see on the platform? Sound off in the comments below. And until next time, this has been The Frozen Gamer, and I'll talk to you later.